Okay, uh, hey everyone, it's Christos from Crispy Stuff, and uh, it's a beautiful day, so I figured I'll take apart one of the microwaves that I found lying on the side of the road, get the transformer and uh, everything else useful out of it. I'm trying a new way of filming uh, from a chest harness thingy, so it means it'll be really easy to film. Alright, might as well get started. Alright, so I've done a few of these already. Get it unscrewing. I have a drill with a screwing bit, makes it a lot easier. And you just go along to all these screws, undo them. This bit you don't really need to see, I'm sure you can figure that out. Alright, uh, after undoing all the screws and uh, prying off the outer housing, you get access to all the interesting bits. Uh, so we got the magnetron assembly sort of stuff there. Ah, the transformer is somewhere in there. This is all the circuitry for the front of the unit. Um, there we go. There. Uh, here are some relays which are useful and a uh, big choke, I'm not sure what that's for. Uh, yeah, there's a lot of things in here that are useful. Most of them I scrap down entirely and take pretty much everything out of them, so uh, uh, let's get going with that. Alright, um... I've just looked into this a little bit more and I pried off this plastic bit and it looks like under here it's got some kind of weird transformer looking thing but it's not a conventional microwave oven transformer. Really weird so I'm going to have to take a look at that and it's very different to what I'm used to in these things. Alright, um, I've made some considerable progress in disassembling this thing. I've taken out a lot of the major components. Um, this is a very, very weird microwave. Uh, there's not very many screws on it. Like, usually when I take these things apart, if I see a screw, I just take it out, because at some point I'm going to need to take it out. But this one didn't have that many screws. It had a lot of these weird plasticky push connector kind of things. It just felt a lot kind of cheaper. Like, uh, this fan, is the whole housing's made of plastic. In the past, I've had um, housings like this would be made out of metal, but you know, I don't care. So, um, the one thing that is a very weird is the transformer. I've exposed it a lot more now. I'm not sure if you can see it properly, but it is definitely not a standard microwave transformer. Whatever housing it has is definitely made of plastic, and it's a completely different looking design. It does seem to have some sort of iron core. But it actually resembles a, um, a flyback transformer from a cathode tube ray television more than a microwave transformer. So once I get a little bit more out, we can take a better look at that. Uh, I've, so far I've gotten quite a few things. I've gotten the magnetron out. There's some very, two very large ring magnets in there if you want to take them out. They're useful. Uh, this circuit board has some stuff on it that I felt like I wanted. Uh, a 25 watt mains power light globe that might be useful and this fan useful for cooling projects so um yeah all right i'll check back in when i've got a little bit more done all right uh, here's what i mean by plasticky like usually something like this this is the main transformer would be uh, bolted in or screwed in but in this case it's just held in with these weird little plastic push connectors and they're a bit annoying you gotta fiddle with them to get them to work but nah doesn't really matter Alright, um, I got the transformer out of the microwave, uh, this is definitely the transformer, although it looks nothing like a typical microwave transformer. Just for reference, uh, here I brought out a normal microwave transformer if you've never seen one. Very large um, iron body, a very distinct primary coil and secondary coil. Uh, this is what are useful for a lot of high voltage projects and stuff, so uh, that's one thing, but... This is very different, um, like the whole build quality of this entire microwave has just felt a lot cheaper, so I'm guessing this is a cheaper way to make a transformer. Yeah, these ones are very robust, they're essentially a chunk of metal, but uh, this one seems to be different. It's got a lot of components on it, like I think these are high voltage uh, capacitors, mains capacitors, those are very useful. Um, it's just got a lot of components that transformers don't usually have in microwaves so um at first I was a bit disappointed because I had a project in mind for the transformer from that one but um 
I think there's going to be a lot in here that I can salvage, and um, once I've got, taken a better look at it, I'll uh, tell you guys what I found. Alright, so um, I'm getting the last of the things out of the microwave. Um, I took off this front panel that used to go there with the timer and stuff. Uh, this thing. Uh, so this has got some good things. Uh, this had two circuit boards, one on top and one underneath. The one underneath got a lot of SMD components and weird things that I don't really want, whereas this one's got a lot of the beefier components which are more useful, like a piezo buzzer, some relay or relays, and uh, a transformer. So uh, I'll be keeping this, that, I'll probably just chuck. Uh, so I'll put this with all the other things I'm going to desolder. The one other thing that uh, I have taken out is this thing. This is the assembly for the um, push button that detects when the microwave closes. Um, so it's got a useful push button in it and uh, I will be salvaging that. The rest of it I'm just going to chuck out. So once you're done with the microwave, another tip is uh, getting rid of hard waste is usually quite expensive. So what I do, I uh, check to see what metal everything is. Uh, pretty much all the casings for this kind of stuff steel and I just keep it in separate piles so I've got plastic over there which isn't worth anything but the steel which a lot of things are um, you can actually instead of paying to get it disposed of at the tip you can take it to a metal mart and sell it off by the kilo you're not gonna make a lot of money but it'll just end up being cheaper because instead of paying to get rid of it you get paid to get rid of it so uh, that's another little tip uh, one other thing that I forgot to mention, uh, very, just very quickly, um, another useful thing you can salvage is on the very bottom of the microwave, there's one of these synchronous motors that rotates the plate, so uh, yeah, I always take these because they can be useful. They run off mains, they spin at 5 to 6 RPM, which is very low RPM, which is very useful for some applications, so uh, yeah, I always take them, they're really easy, so always take them. Okay, uh, I removed the transformer module from its uh, plastic housing, and uh, uh, I've taken a closer look at it, and um, yeah, this is definitely not a conventional microwave transformer. Um, from what I can tell, this is actually much more similar to the flyback transformer you would see in an old television. Uh, it's got the it's got a primary which I've identified as this coil. Um, it's a bit confused because they're both wound. I'm not sure if you can tell with very thin wire, but this one has a lot of thin wires wrapped together. I think that's called lux wiring, but I'm not sure. And they're all connected together though. So it's just like having a lot of wires in parallel. Uh, so I'm not sure exactly what's going on there. I think that reduces um, heating of the edges of the wire or something. Uh, I'm not 100% sure, I'm not an electrical engineer. Uh, this looks like the secondary coil. Um, now here it's got some uh, high voltage capacitors, these are up to 3 kilovolt capacitors, so these aren't mains capacitors, these are for the output, and I'm guessing to smooth the output ripple, and um, these are diodes, I'm guessing to rectify it, the output, because a transformer has to run like AC for it to work, because um, these are DC capacitors, high voltage DC capacitors, so I'm not exactly sure what they do, um, these are just beefy uh, mains capacitors, 350 volt capacitors. Uh, I can't really tell what, how much capacitance they have, but um, I'm sure they'll be useful. So they'll definitely be something I'll salvage. Uh, over here, I think that might be a resistor, but I'm not sure. Like a beefy resistor. Um, underneath it does seem to have some sort of microcontroller to control the whole thing. A lot of uh, weird traces. I'm doing something. Not exactly sure what's going on down there. Um, over here seems to be uh, the most solid evidence that this is indeed a flyback transformer. Uh, right here, uh, at first I thought this might have been a weird MOSFET, but it's got the four legs, so I'm thinking that's a full bridge rectifying uh, rectifier. So that'll turn AC into DC. Um, so that and flybacks need to have DC power, and then they're oscillated in a specific way using MOSFETs. And these appear to be MOSFETs, so I think this is some sort of flyback driver that runs a flyback transformer to power the microwave rather than a conventional, just a normal mains transformer. So a lot more complicated circuitry, but 
with the price of copper being so high, this is a much newer microwave, so I can understand why. I think it's because copper is very expensive right now and it's a lot cheaper to make something like this than it is to make a big transformer like that. So, um, this is very interesting. I'm going to desolder a lot of these parts and keep them for my use, but uh, I'm not exactly sure what I'm going to do with most of it. So, um, I guess that'll conclude my video on disassembling the microwave. Uh, Hope you guys enjoyed. See you next time.